These are two small slabs of a pterosaur from the Lias. They're the same specimen, and what you've got on one block is um, some limb bones. The other one is scaplocoracoid, which is here, just under here. Now, um, it was collected a few months ago, and the, the guy who collected it has actually stabilised it by drying it very, very slowly, which is great. But it's in quite a friable, sh well, it's in a, like a laminated mudstone. Ideally, in some ways, um, the, the sections are cut quite close to the bone. Now, I don't know the circumstances when you collect it, but ideally what you see often in the field when you find um, material like this is actually, when you cut it out, is to take out a wide section, much more than, than you can see, because sometimes, maybe not in this case, but sometimes there's more to see that might be under the sort of sediment. Um, and I've done things in the past where I've collected a fish and just seen the sort of, say, just the tip of the, the tail and assumed, that, wrongly, the length of it, and goodness knows what, and I've been very lucky, but I've nearly clipped the, the, the tip of the snout because I've not given it enough sort of birth. So it's come to us, and what we're trying to do is to actually expose these and make sure they're, they're stable, clean them down. So that it, they've been coated with a um, consolidant uh, called paraloid, which is a like a sort of um, plastic pellet. It's it's quite it's um, form stable in the sense it's it stays for a long time. But it's mixed with acetone. You mix it to various sort of thicknesses, and the guys painted this on to actually hold it all together. You can see the chips of shale with it, and goodness knows what. This one I've started, but that's that's great. So it's come to us. Okay, it's fine. So what I've tried to do with this one at the moment is just to trim off the the, the bits that are um, surplus to the, the bone, which is here, which is the scaplocoracoid. I've not gone any further to this, but this was that. So then what I'm trying to do is you can see the, the lamina, which have actually started to separate, because he dried it slowly, but it still will try to separate. So the idea for me now is to thin this down to a, an acceptable thickness, which is probably about, say, 12 mil, something like that. If then I feel it needs more stabilising, what I'll do is to actually cover the, the back of it with three or four um, sheets of very thin, it looks like tissue paper, fibreglass sheet, and that will then strengthen it. And in the, in the future, if someone picks it up, it's not going to sort of break and crumble in front of their hands. I don't think this one will. Um, but this one, again, you can see this is, I've not even touched it, but you can see it's in a, you see this mudstone underneath, more of a sort of shale above. And um, what we've had to use here, and a lot of people don't like it, the use of this, is actually a very thin superglue. So all these little cracks have been infilled with very thin superglue, which runs, it's so thin, it's like acetone, it runs very thinly in there and stabilizes that until I can actually grind it down and remove it. Now, all the superglues we use and this um, paraloid is removable. So when I get it down to a certain stage where it's stable and I'm happy with it, it's not going to fall apart or whatever, then the next stage will be to, and we'll demonstrate this, to actually gently air braid this away. So all this paraloid we can get rid of with an air abrasive, and then we can very delicately clean and, and show what bones are on the sort of block. And it's, it's quite an interesting specimen in the sense that since Mary Anning died, no one's found anything of any consequence. So this is probably the most that's ever been found since she found her pterosaur material. So I think the guys have found it, they're going to sort of notify the right scientific bodies and make them aware of what they've got, which is great, which is a responsible thing to do. And I, it's a pleasure for me to actually just clean these things down because I'm really interested in pterosaur material as well from a different age. And I've cleaned a lot of my own material, so I'm quite confident that I can do this and and show it to its best abilities. What I can't do is, and I'm not prepared to do, is actually put that sort of slab, that bit back and make the bones up because I think scientifically it's so important that you, you wouldn't do that with this because it, it, it's, it's a really important specimen. But just to show you um, this slab, you can see this, this, this is the scaplicoricoid. It's like a sort of boomerang. And you can see it just under the sort of surface and that'll clean up really, really nice. Here's one from the Kimbridge that you can see there. So this, this actually, this end goes into the um, sort of breastbone. 
and the humorous contacts with that, you see that joint there, and the, the sort of wing comes away from that. Okay, you can just see the end of the scapular coracoid it's slightly missing. Now, that's easy to do when you're out in the field, that's probably dropped on, you wouldn't even notice it. So it's always pays to be extremely careful um, with any sort of find of this, this, con this importance in some ways. But the guys collected it, um, there's no more of it, um, but what it's going to reveal is actually some really important sort of features of this early Jurassic pterosaur. Dimorphodon, presumably. <laughs> God. Claw, see that claw? That was the tibia going across there. These bones here have gone across there. Oh God. That, there's the vertebra, the tail vertebra, all the bones yeah. that's going across here and along there. This is dimorphodon. Um, this is really cool. I'll tell you, yeah. That's all we've got for you today from the Etches collection. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more and hopefully we'll see you next time.